Welcome to Bioba. My name is Ulai, and today we have Gabe Cannon, a dietitian and a personal trainer. Today he's going to be giving us ideas and tips about how to stay healthy with exercise and fitness. Gabe, thank you. You're welcome. I'm glad to be here. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, like she said, my name is Gabriel Cannon. Gabe for short. You can call me Gabe if you're my friend. If you're not, you know, <laughs> don't. Um, but yeah, I'm a dietitian and a, a personal trainer. Went to school at OU. Um, that's that's where I am right now. Like um, that's that's me. That's what I'm doing. Okay. Why did you become a dietitian? <clears throat> well, honestly, um, preventative medicine mm -hmm. was a big deal to me. Um, lost my father when I was young, and it was something that was very preventable. So I decided to become the kind of man that could prevent something like that from happening to other people, and uh, that's. That's pretty much the motivator right there. That's okay. it. That's very kind of you. Um, so let's get started. So if you're wanting to lose weight, what's the better way? Eating or exercising? That's pretty simple. What are you worst at? Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. Turns out if you eat pretty good and you don't exercise, exercise is going to be the route you need to go. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. you know, if you're not eating so good and you work out all the time but you're not getting the results you want, maybe it's diet. Okay, so how often should you exercise? How often? Mm -hmm. Like what do they recommend? Yes. 30 minutes a day. But that's physical activity, which is not the same thing as exercise. Mm -hmm. Physical activity is when you just move around a lot. Okay. Walking, I guess technically like dancing, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, anything like that, that's physical activity. Mm -hmm. However, I would recommend strenuous exercise. Mm -hmm. Actually pushing yourself to make the body adapt to it. And that will make you the healthiest. Okay. So let's just say if I am just starting out, let's just say I am obese and I wanted to work out, what is the workout that I should focus on more, cardio or weights? So you want to go from obese mm -hmm. to obese, that's what you're yeah. trying to say? <laughs> no, okay. Exactly that, exactly. Um, mm -hmm. Well first I would probably try to assess you. Mm -hmm. If you can't run a mile, mm -hmm. then I would start maybe walking a little bit and jogging, that's mm -hmm. called HIIT training, high intensity interval training. So you start at a low intensity and then you go hard for a little bit and mm -hmm. then you back off and you go hard again. And that's a good way to progress into running. Okay. That's one. Okay. All right. Now women specifically. Mm. I just want to know what you're well, saying. It's not going to be a negative statement. Okay. Uh, okay. But y'all tend to have more bone loss, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, Absolutely. that's that's a problem. Osteoporosis. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, so resistance training will be very beneficial. Okay, so the reason why women tend to have low bone density is because we have a hormone called estrogen, and estrogen tend to cause calcium not to be utilized in the bone as much. There are other factors too, so. Yeah, so one factor you probably actually could help you know, with would be weight-bearing movements, mm -hmm. right? So for example, um, if you do squats, mm -hmm. right? So barbell on your back, that extra weight is going to cause your bones to increase in density. So they use calcium more because it's a weight bearing movement. Okay. Make sense? Yes, absolutely. So one way to fight against the estrogen problem would be mm. to use weights. Okay. So women resistance should do training. more resistance training. What about the fact that some women are scared that they're going to get big muscles and all that? What, is, what do you think about that? Okay. So the big muscles thing, mm -hmm. like she said, y'all's whole big hormone is estrogen, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Not testosterone, but estrogen. So it's going to be really, really hard for y'all to gain a lot of muscle. Mm -hmm. Now wait, that's, but that doesn't mean y'all can't have muscle. Okay. okay. If you work hard enough, you can build muscle. And unfortunately, muscles actually weigh more than fat by mass. Okay? Absolutely. So you might lose inches in your waist, but gain muscle and weigh the same. Mm -hmm. So really, you're burning fat and gaining muscle, but your waist not fluctuating, fluctuating like it should. Okay. And don't let that discourage you. That's why I'm not a big fan of the scale, more about circumference and measurements. Okay, good. That's very good advice. I don't like the scale either. It doesn't help me much. Uh, so what is the best place to get professional advice? Let's just say there's a lot of people out there that claim that they're professionals in dietary or nutrition, quote unquote, or weights or professional. Uh, I believe for nutrition, you'd mm -hmm. probably want to go to the nutrition expert. Mm -hmm. So, what is the best way to gain muscle with food and exercise? What is the best exercise and what is the perfect amount of nutrients to gain muscles? Well, we all know that muscles are made of protein. Mm -hmm. So, you're going to increase your protein, but that only works out if you actually lift weights. Mm -hmm. Okay? You can't just increase your protein and build more muscle. You actually have to do something with it. 
So I would suggest resistance training. Now these are complex movements. More than one muscle joint. Okay, so joint, mm -hmm. muscle. So one joint, two joints. Okay. That'd be multi-joint. Okay. All right? So multi-joint stuff is what we're going for. Bench press, mm -hmm. that's more than one joint, right? Okay. All right, so pull-ups, you're pulling down, yeah? Mm -hmm. That's more than one joint. Okay. Squats, you're going all the way down, your knee joint, mm -hmm. hip joint, that's okay. more than one joint. Now these work almost the full body, mm -hmm. okay? There's resistance there that'll help stimulate muscle growth. Okay. How do you know how much weights to use on your body? Let's just say you first got to the gym. Oh, that's a great question. Okay. Thank okay. You. So people are always going to say these numbers, okay? Now, six below is normally strength. Six to 15 is hypertrophic lifts, hypertrophy, right? What does that mean? In like that hypertrophy is muscle growth. Okay, now they say this, and then they say anything above that is muscular endurance. Mm -hmm. But that only applies if you fail at that uh, rep range, mm -hmm. okay? I can't just go do 12 reps of any weight I want and get growth. I have to fail within that range, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Okay. So basically, when you fail doing resistance training, that's when you're actually going to get growth. So what does results. failing mean? Like That means that you can't lift it upward anymore, or what does that mean? All right, for example, if I'm on bench press, which you would need a spot on, and I have some weight on there. So let's say I'm on rep nine. You get it pretty easy, right? Mm -hmm. Rep 10, mm -hmm. rep 11, mm -hmm. right, a little wobbly. Okay. Then rep 12, uh, and then I barely get it up. Maybe I don't, maybe my friend helps me pick it up. Uh -huh. That's failure. Okay. Failure is not when it gets hard, it's okay. when it does no longer work. Okay, so somebody has to physically. Right, so ask yourself this, why would my body ever have to adapt to something if it could do it. Okay, so what about the food component part? Of it? What is it? Is it carbohydrate? Is it protein or fat that help you build your muscles? Well, okay, that depends. That depends on your workload, mm -hmm. right? Now, growing up in high school, I was not the biggest guy. I would have a high protein diet, but no carbs. So my body would actually be running on protein, which is not what you want, like at all. Mm -hmm. So you'll need carbohydrates too. But I was a hard gainer. Now, if you're overweight a little bit and you're just trying to gain some muscle, then I would suggest adding a little more protein but taking it away from the carbs, if that would make sense. Yeah. Because the calories, you know, you don't want too high of a calorie diet mm -hmm. if you're trying to like look good, right? Mm -hmm. Or be fit. So if I'm gonna add something, I take something away somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, what do you like best about being a dietitian and a professional trainer? Well, um, honestly, mm -hmm. Um, I was trainer first, so I loved you know getting people to work hard. I could see it, I could see it, I could see it. Mm -hmm. However, without being a nutrition expert, I mean, I couldn't help them in that area. But you have to get good at both, or you're not going to get the results you want, and that's the problem. Okay. So, uh, what would you change about this industry right now? What is the best advice you can give to anybody that's watching this video about nutrition and exercise? Um, combine them. That would be. The way to go, mm -hmm. like I said, like like why would you just want to be good at one thing when you could be good at two, right? Two. Sure. Um, first thing I would change is the whole protein thing. <laughs> now, you can't just have a diet of protein. Like you were gonna feel like crap. Yes. Correct. You actually gain some fat because the body doesn't convert the protein. If you can't if you can't utilize it, it just stores it as fat. You can't keep your diet the same but increase your protein a lot because that's just adding additional calories. And if you're not gonna use those calories, then yes, they were gonna to convert to fat. So high protein diets, if you don't change anything else about your fat and carbs, yeah, you're just gonna gain weight. Mm -hmm. And not good weight, not the weight you want. Mm -hmm. Plus, those guys that have, um, let's see, like two grams of protein per pound. So if you weigh 170, mm -hmm. you're getting over 300 grams of protein. That's a ridiculous amount of protein. Your body can't use that. Like, I'm a, 175 pound individual, and my body is cool with about 120 grams of protein. I build just muscle just fine. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty strong for my size. Like, don't go crazy with protein. Mm -hmm. So protein shakes, like, they have their place, okay? But you don't need them all daggum day. Secondly, I'm gonna talk about workouts. CrossFit, I kinda, I like it, I guess. Like it's cool concept mm -hmm. for police officers and stuff like that. Man, like guys, the basics work. Mm -hmm. Like the stuff that's been tested works. You just gonna throw a bunch of crazy stuff together. 
I mean, you're not going to get the benefits you want. You might actually hurt yourself. Mm -hmm. Like if, if it sounds crazy and you hurt yourself doing it, it's probably not healthy, right? Because yeah, the goal usually. is health. Yeah. Right? The usual thing is with stuff like that that goes such extreme ends, regardless of exercise or diet, is the fact that your body is not adapted to that kind of workout or that kind of eating. So it goes into like a shock mode where you can't really understand what's going on and you're more likely to get injured or get hurt from it. All right, so let me reiterate on the whole CrossFit thing. Mm -hmm. Now, there are some great CrossFit trainers that teach the Olympic lifts, perfect, and all that stuff, but that's not stuff you play around with. So if you are doing CrossFit, make sure you have a great trainer because it's very complex. Mm -hmm. Because if you get some dude off the street, there's a good chance you could get hurt with some of those movements. But it, they do have their place. Mm -hmm. Okay, what about the dietary industry? What would you, what's the big old kahuna in that I area? would probably find a dietitian straight up because some dude calling himself a nutritionist or some woman calling himself a nutritionist just to call them one and just because they read something online one time a long time ago. Yep. That's some scary advice, guys. Like, do your research, talk to the medical professionals. They can help you. What do you describe as optimal health or your best health? How do you define that? Is it what you see or... Oh. You look, what, how would you tell? It's different. So health, optimal health. Mm -hmm. um, no disease. You are not sick. That's optimal health. Your blood pressure is good, mm -hmm. right? You feel good. Yeah. Blood sugar is good. Mm -hmm. Weight's good. Like you feel good about life. That's optimal health. You you're not sick, mm -hmm. right? My goal in life to get people there. Now fitness is different. Mm -hmm. You can be fit and unhealthy. If that makes sense. Absolutely. I know this because I've, I've ran a marathon before. And although I could run really far, I looked like crap and felt like crap all day. Right? And training for it hurt every single day. That wasn't optimum health, mm -hmm. even though I was very fit, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. So there's a difference between health and fitness. So are you at your optimal health right now? Your best health? Best is close. Mm -hmm. It's close. Um, but... I get into some of the fitness stuff sometimes and get myself into trouble. But yeah, I'm okay. I'm doing okay right now. Okay, good. So where can people find you? Um, if you have questions about stuff like this, you can email me at thecanonrd at gmail.com. I also have a Facebook page, which will probably be here. Somewhere. Somewhere. Well. Made by this sweet cup that you have. <laughs> um, also have uh, Instagram, which is pretty sweet and it's you probably label that somewhere in this area too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Well, uh, me. what's your top three advice before we go that you can give somebody to stay healthy? To stay healthy? Yeah, just top three advice to stay healthy. What is the big old one, two, three? <laughs> oh, okay. okay. All right, I got you. I got you. Um, number one, for those people, like for unhealthy people that want to be healthy. Yeah. All right, we can do that. So number one, first off, you got to realize like deep down that that you can become healthy and that you can stick with it, hang on and do what you need to do to get to where you want to be. Because mm -hmm. if you don't believe in yourself, ain't nobody else going to believe in you to help you in the first place. Absolutely. Believe in what you can do mm -hmm. and you can get there. That gives you the shot. Okay. Next, once you take your shot, mm -hmm. what's going to determine if you get healthy or not is if you show up the times that you don't want to or you eat well the times you don't want to, if that makes sense. Like that's going to be the big determining factor. True. Number three. Number three, find an accountability partner or someone like us because we're going to help you out. We're going to give you the best advice possible, mm -hmm. but it sucks doing it alone. I'm not going to lie. I had to do it alone. It's it's hard road, mm -hmm. but find somebody that will help you. You know, ain't nobody like doing stuff alone, right? Absolutely. It's easier when you got somebody having your back. Absolutely. So, Those are my three. So what would you say to that one person that's almost about to quit? What would you tell them? It's like always trying one more time that's going to make the difference, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Hang on longer than you think you can, and you'll get to where you want to be. That like, I almost fell out of high school, okay? I almost fell out of college. I ended up with a master's degree. <laughs> In, like, hang on longer than you think you're supposed to or what people tell you you can hang. Like, just keep going. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. There you go. You heard it from the man. Resiliency. Thank you. So, there you go. Here is Gib Cannon again. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And thank you guys for watching BioBa. And as always, let's eat.